What's up guys, my name is Kyle Diamond, welcome to a brand new episode of VMTV Vaults with myself and my guest for this episode, Mr. Brett Johns. Um, we spoke to Brett about the recently announced, uh, well it was already been announced but it was updated, the Bellator Bantamweight uh, tournament that they're putting on. Um, Brett is obviously in the Bantamweight division there and we had reached out to him um, when it was announced to, to ask about um the fact that he wasn't involved a lot of people thought he might be um and he said that he wasn't really surprised so of course we wanted to reach out to him to uh, to elaborate on that a little bit more and talk about the tournament talk about his future in bellator how it's gone so far as well as his own mma promotion and all that good stuff so without further ado the man himself mr brett johns um, so we reached out to you the other day to get your take on the uh, Bellator tournament, and I was surprised by your response to saying that you you hadn't heard anything, but you didn't really expect to. Um, I know you mentioned your last performance being being probably the reason for that, but can you can you explain to me why why you just didn't expect to hear anything? Yeah, like I I know there's a list of fighters in that division, and I know I've got quite a um, quite a good record, quite a good name to go along with it. Um, you know, if I look at the bigger picture, they put Sabatello in, someone who beat me last May, and it made sense to me, really. You know, they, they, they weren't going to put someone like myself in. Yeah, I know I come off a very good win back in February, but um, I felt like I needed to make a little bit more of an impact. You know, if I'd won last May and then won in February, then then I'd be quite annoyed if they didn't put me in the tournament. But um, it was one of them things. They announced the tournament, and to be completely honest, it was like, yeah, I knew I wasn't going to be in it, but when they announced it, it was still a little bit of a a bitter pill not to be involved in it, you know. Um, you know, even if even if they, they kind of said something now to me, oh look, would you like to be in it? I, I'm in a position where I probably wouldn't been able I wouldn't have been able to take it for April time, you know. Mm. But um no, I'm uh you know I, I'm a realist. I'll I'll say it how it is, how I see it. Nobody is a bit bigger critic than than myself and um I feel like I maybe got one one or one, maybe two fights before I can start shouting about, you know, being in a big tournament like that, you know? Do you feel like, like, obviously with the win, it, it wasn't that long ago at all. It almost feels like if, if that fight had been a little bit earlier and you could have had one fight before this was announced, so you had two wins um, under the Bellator banner, I feel like you probably, you would have been in with a lot better shot of being put in there. Is it just like, I, I guess it's difficult because these things don't come around a lot but it also feels like you were a couple of couple of months away from from being in this conversation. Like two wins, yeah. you're probably in there. Yeah, like you said, you know, obviously we were meant to fight Eric Perez in October, and um, that fight fell through. So maybe you know, if I'd won that fight and then won this fight, maybe I would have been in 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 a great shout to be you know in that tournament. But unfortunately, that fight fell through, and um, yeah, it, obviously it was. That was such a mad experience going all the way out to Arizona, going through all the COVID restrictions, and then to find out then that, yeah, you know, the fight is off. Yeah, it, it was, it was, it was tough to kind of take, you know. And um, yeah, looking back now, I haven't really thought of it like that, you know. Looking back now, maybe a win over Perez would have probably put me in line with something like that. But um, but yeah, we'd have to, you know, we'd have to see what what um, you know, we'd have to have a look at see what they want to do next. I know that they're interested in having me on that in that Dublin card again on the twenty third of September. I'd be lying if I said I want I want to be on that. I want to be on before that again. You know, um, I'm getting married on the third of June to my best friend, so you know we're looking forward to that. And we're 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 quite busy outside of fighting with that stuff. But you know, I would have done anything to have another another fight before the wedding. But at the end of the day, I I understand from Bellator's point of view, the, the, you know, they, they pay me quite a bit of money and. For them, you know, financially, it's not really the best decision. They can, they can wait until September and see me then. You know, mm. uh, what's um? Do you have a, like an overall take on the uh, on the tournament that was announced? Obviously, Sabatello is a guy that you've already faced. He's in there. He's been added as one of the wild cards for it. Um, but do you have any? Is there any guys in there that you think are, are probably more likely to win the tournament? Like anything like that? To be honest, I think. <sighs> I don't think this this Bellator tournament is as clear cut. You know, when I look at mm. the featherweight tournament, I was kind of backing AJ McKee to win it from the start, really. But this time, it's a bit all over the shop. You know, um, I'm a big fan of Horiguchi. I think Horiguchi looked really good in that in our Sergio Pettis fight. I think his speed has made a massive difference. Um, so I think Horiguchi has a good chance of going to the final. 
but he's, he's got a couple of tough fights ahead of him, horrible Chaz, you know. The Patchy Mix fight off the bat isn't exactly a good start, you know. Um, mm. Someone who's really big for the weight, and um, I know that he's going to want to get his hands on Horiguchi. If he stays at range and tries to strike Horiguchi, I think he'll have a bad night, but um, I'm sure if he grabs onto Horiguchi, I think he can make a big impact, you know. So, you know, I'm going to say at the minute, you know, Rafa and Stott's Horiguchi final, that's what I, I see happening. But we've got to wait and see, you know. I, I love the way it all pans out. I love the way that the whole tournament structure works. And, um, yeah, like I think personally, if you ask me about who I think is going to reach the final, I'd say Horiguchi one side and uh, and Rafael Stott the other side. Hmm. How's life been in Bellator so far? Obviously, I know it's been the Eric Perez thing was was gutting. That would have been would have been such a great opportunity to get another get another opportunity to go out and perform in the Bellator cage there. Um, but obviously, eventually. We got the the one in Dublin, and you picked up that win, which was such a great moment. Um, but how, in general, has life been at Bellator? Yeah, like I, I've always been a fan of of the promotion, not just that promotion, but you know all sorts of promotions. But Bellator was one I used to watch a lot as a, as a young fighter going through the ranks. And not that I ever thought I'd be there, but I was a massive fan of like the Eddie yeah, Alvarez, Michael Chandler fights. You know, hmm. there's loads of fights that I was that I was big fans of, and Bellator seemed to. I don't I like the way they did the tournaments years ago and then they've come back to that same structure. It's, it's just fantastic. And, you know, I didn't, you know, obviously with the UFC, I, I, th- I thoroughly enjoyed my time with the UFC and I, I felt like personally I made an impact there with my career. I, I was happy with the, the fights that I'd had there and the people I'd fought there. I felt like I didn't, I didn't say no to anybody. But, you know, at the end of the day, it got to a point where I felt like financially I was a little bit, underpaid and so you know at the end of the day and it's not and it's no hard feelings towards the UFC it's just I know mm. full well they're a business and technically I'm a business as well you know and if it's not working then you've got to kind of move things you know and um, Bellator the first company to step up and I felt like that Bellator coming forward would be one of the first companies it, it showed a lot of loyalty to me and and I wanted to show the loyalty back so there wasn't there wasn't loads of offers on the table as in like because I took the first one that was offered to me and um, I'm very thankful. I'm very thankful that Mike Hogan, Scott Coker for taking a chance to me. Hasn't been the best start, you know, but I promise I'm a, I'm a company man. I'll, you know, I'll fight anyone. And yeah, that we just got to wait now and see what happens over the next few months. You know, I definitely see that September 23rd card paying off for me and um, just depends who they want to put in. To be honest, there's a list of names you can look at. There's two Irish fighters you can put in there. There's a few other guys you can put in there and I'm, I'm happy to fight anybody, you know. I got respect to everybody in this division, and I just want to, you know, I, I just want to make an impact in the sport. You know, I know I've got a few years left, probably five, six years left in the sport, but I want to, you know, I want to make a big impact. I want to get into that top ten in the in the in the belt or uh, rankings and work my way up. Then mm. you said about the uh, the impact that you made in the UFC, which. Um... Obviously, we recently had the UFC London card, which was like a big celebration of UK MMA. And it, it felt for for a while like you were one of the guys that was was doing that. And it was more like, you know, we had to wait a few months in between seeing one of the UK guys in there. Um, but it was always like a celebration every time. Um, and now you see so many Welsh guys coming through and stuff. Um, I saw on Twitter that you called uh, Jack Shaw's win the other day, the best performance you've seen from a Welsh fighter in the UFC. Like... I don't want to. I don't want to put you in in a position where you're like the the person who was before this boom because you're still very much a part of it, competing in the in a very good division in Bellator. But it does feel like you know maybe you were the person who kicked the door down a little bit for that. Is that fair to say? I don't. I'm not trying to make it. Yeah. No. Make no. You sound I, arrogant I, by saying yes, but you no, know I mean? no, not at all. No, I, I. To be honest, I. You know, I. I always wanted to be that that sort of like. I wanted to be one of the first guys in there, uh, and, and and I achieved that dream. And I said, I said to my mother, I said, look, I just want to go in there, be one of the first guys, pick up a win. Honestly, if I just picked up my first win UFC and left the game, I think you know my name would have been in the history book. So yeah, I'm happy, and I, but but then again, I'm happy to see that the the game is evolving in Wales. You know what I mean? So yeah, I, you know at the end of the day, I do see these up and comers coming through, and I do see them, you know, taking over now. You know, I I'm I'm, I'm not that I've had my fun because I'm sounding as if like the journey's yeah. coming to a finish, but I've done everything I've wanted to do in the sport, as in 
I won two world titles previously with different promotions. You know, I fought the best fighters in the world. I've got a good record of 18 and three. You know, I've been very lucky and um, I'm happy with everything I've done. Having said that, I still think I've got about maybe five, six years left. And I train, in my, in my opinion, with the best bantamweight that's, that's in Europe, which is Jack Shaw. Train with him on a daily basis. And um, yeah, watching Tank, you know, and his performance against Valiev in, in UFC London was a big kick up the backside, not just for me, but for the team, you know. Mm. When someone wins like that, when you win or when someone in your team wins, it doesn't, it, it doesn't, you know, it helps everybody kind of do that little extra bit in the gym. And um, it's nice to see Tank getting these fights now and getting the opposition because he always, in my opinion, always was able to compete with these guys. The fact he's not in the top 15 is an absolute joke. But having said that, Tank is as simple as I'll just beat the next guy until I get there. So, um, yeah, no, like I said, I like the the fact that they call me a bit of the, they call me the veteran at 30 years old. So that's mm. sort of like the joke in the gym. I'm, I'm the veteran in the, in the gym. So I don't, I don't mind being called it. You know, I've had enough fights now to know what it's like. And yeah, I'd like to say that, you know, I was one of the first guys in there and that, that's a massive honour for me. And to see everybody else improving from where I was is absolutely amazing as well. You know, I'm not, I'm not, I'm not a selfish person. I, I want to see not just me rise in this sport, but, the wheels rise in the sport, then I feel like that's happening now. Is there uh, is there another guy you think like is, I always think of it as it always comes in waves when you get like a pool of talent emerging. So we had you and and Jack's kind of stepped into that role, taking the UFC spot whilst you've moved on to Bellator. Is there a guy coming through that you think might be able to take that spot after Jack? I know we've got obviously Cage Warriors is this weekend with two events. Uh, I know just off the top of my head, we've got Aaron AB fighting in the co-main event yeah. of one of them. Um, is there a guy that springs to mind? To be honest, there's, um, you know, obviously by the time the tank gets, hits the end of his days, I think there's a handful of guys coming through. You know, we got a youngster in the gym who's, who's 16, Johan Thomas, and making an impact. At, uh, no, 17, sorry, making a massive impact in, in the amateur scene. So I definitely see him making it. But going a little bit further ahead, you know, we've got Josh O'Connor who's had one win at, at Pro and he looks good. I've watched him train. I've, I've seen him fight. I think he's good. He's not from the same same gym. He's from a gym in Swansea with uh, coach Dino, Dino Gambatessa. You know, Josh O'Connor is another one that I see doing really well. We have a list of really good fighters coming through the ranks, you know. You ask me a question, say, Who's the next guy to sign? That I don't know. There's so many at the minute. Um, we've even got the guys who have been on the scene for a very long time and we're still waiting to get their shot. Mm. You know, people like Josh Reed and, you know, you've got all them guys as well. Uh, Aaron Khalid, you know, obviously Liu Long's doing really well with Belt or myself. You know, there's loads of different guys. But, um, but yeah, you know, if you talk about the youngsters coming through, we have some crazy youngsters. Rowan Crocker, Levi Batchelor, who fought on the weekend, who won their Cage Warriors titles. Uh, their amateur titles and um, yeah we've got a list of fighters coming through the ranks and and honestly from my point of view looking at them it's, ter it's terrifying it really is mm -hmm. and um, I'm looking forward to retiring so I won't have to wrestle them anymore you talk about bringing through like the next uh, the next wave of guys obviously uh, you've set up your own promotion which is doing that exact thing um, does it give you kind of a, a newfound respect for now that you've you've kind of run a show from the background, <laughs> like the, the the pressure of doing that compared to being a fighter and just showing up and everything's there for you, I, I can't imagine. I would, I would a hundred times out of a hundred prefer to get punched in the face <laughs> than than than, than organise a show. I, I honestly, I would. The the head work of dealing with like um, pull outs, or oh, we've had an absolute nightmare with the previous venue. We had a lovely venue and then ended up falling out with a. With the venue for that, they, they were changing the rules up last second, which I felt was very unfair. We've had to change the date slightly, but we still got a good fight card. We still got about 12 fights on the card at the minute. I'm looking to get 15. Um, but like, look, I'm just trying to, you know, I don't want people to think that this is a big money move for me because it's not, you know, we're, we're mm. believe it or not, we're one of the only amateur shows out there who's handed out bonus money. You know, we, we want to be a little bit different. You know, at the end of the day, that that bonus money could be slotted into mine and and the other the other guys who was helping me promote the show. We could slot down our pocket. We want to give initiative to these fighters, and we want to give 
another platform. There's plenty of platforms in the UK. You've got Adrenaline, you've got Budo, you've got Cage Warriors Wales, who who run a fantastic show with Richard Shaw. Honestly, they they run it like clockwork. It's amazing. I would just like to be another show mm. where fighters are able to showcase their skills on. And, you know, amateur MMA fighters don't get paid, really. So, you know, the fact that someone could have a good night and get a good finish and they're able to have £500 in their pocket is a big deal, you know. And um, we just want to be different. We want to be against the grain and uh, we feel like we're doing that. So May the 7th, Kamal and Showground is the next one and we're hoping, you know, to have a, a good show, really. You know, some good fighters on the card, two professional fights on, the rest will be amateur MMA. And, um, yeah, we've got two title fights as well. So we're looking forward to it. That's incredible, mate. Um, the last thing I, I can't talk to you. Uh, we've we've ticked off talking about Wales, talked off talking about fighting. I can't talk to you and not talk about the other thing that uh, I always associate you with, of course, Swansea. Um, <laughs> through following you on social media, if I ever met a Swansea fan in a pub, I could probably have a detailed conversation about the position Swansea are in. Um, <laughs> just for following you on social media. Uh, talk to me about how Swansea have been doing uh, this season. Like, What's the general feeling amongst the fans? I know it's been a bit, bit yeah. up and down. Yeah, you could say that. Yeah, you know, there's, uh, there's, there's, I love, I love the team. I, I, you know, I know, I know some of the, the fans are not so fussed on, on Russell Martin, but, you know, I like, I like the gaffer. I like him, you know, I've met him a few times. I like who he is, I like who he, what he stands for. I like the players we got. It's just we're lacking that real momentum at the minute with getting results, and we seem to be winning one, losing one, winning one, losing one. There's no real mm. momentum push. Um, and and this weekend, believe it or not, I'm I'm going away with the Swans, and we've got our local South Wales derby against Cardiff City, Ooh. which is an absolutely enormous game for South Wales. We won back home this time. I think maybe ever. I might be wrong, but I think it's ever where Swansea City have a chance to do the double over the capital city Cardiff. So, um, yeah, we're looking forward to going down there and having a little watch and fingers crossed we get the win. But um, it's a tough game. It's a tough game. Them Cardiff City boys aren't easy to uh, to beat, you know? Yeah, for sure. Um, I think the camera just went off. Yeah, someone oh, tried to go. form me mid-combo. Ah, uh, no problem. No problem. <laughs> it, it did it right at the end, so we're all good. Yeah. Um, yeah. Brett, uh, congratulations on the promotion. That's so great. I didn't know about the bonuses. That's incredible. Um, yeah. Fingers crossed that Bellator are able to make something happen for you before the Dublin card. Although, if they book you on the on that Dublin card against one of the uh, one of the Irishmen, uh, it's going to be yeah. absolutely incredible. Yeah. And uh, and congratulations on the wedding. Thank you very much. Yeah. So obviously we're looking forward to that. And, and like with the with the Dublin card, you know, it falls love it falls into place. You know, at the end mm. of the day, I'm gonna have my wedding. I want to really, you know, my 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 partner and my partner fiance, she she's been there since since uh since day one. And I feel like she deserves this time where she can uh, relax with me and I feel like I need to relax with her. So it all falls into place, you know, at the end of June, say the first week into July can start camp and that gives mm. me you know, enough time to get ready for, for Dublin. So, yeah, I'm looking forward to it. I'm really excited. I, I just can't wait to, um, you know, to get to the wedding, really, you know. Sounds great, mate. Uh, sorry for taking up a little bit more time. No, no, no you're absolutely, mate, you're all good. Couldn't not get Swansea in there. That had to happen. <laughs> yeah. uh, cheers for the time, mate. Uh, hopefully you. that you. Dublin card will do it again for that. That'll be great. Fing fingers crossed. No, fingers crossed. Fingers crossed, mate. Uh, enjoy the rest of your day and all the uh, all the planning. Good luck with that. <laughs> Thank you very much, mate. Thank you. Nice one, I'll mate. see you cheers. soon, right? Thank you, cheers. brother. Thank you. Thank you for checking out this episode of VMTV Vault with myself, Kyle Diamond, and of course, Mr. Brett Johns. Um, we can't wait to see him back in the Bellator cage, hopefully, fingers crossed, for the London card or potentially one of the returns to Dublin. Those cards are always incredible, as you well know. Hit subscribe so you don't miss an episode of VMTV Vault. Until then, I will catch you on the next one, guys, in a bit. Mm -hmm.